Hey, hello everyone. Okay, we're gonna go through how to update your firmware on Linux. Actually, this applies to everybody, but uh, just for the Linux users, how do you update your uh, Asus motherboard firmware here? So just go to the asus.com page, look for your baby. Where's it? This one. Okay. I, I'm, I mean, this row kind of thing here. So I'm going to look for the 790 um, Hero, the one that I have. Okay. Just, just look for the one that you want, that you're using. Then you go to support drivers, BIOS, and for some weird reason, they're asking, you know, I'm already here. They're asking if I'm already there. <laughs> so anyway, um, you download this baby. Okay, there we go. You get a USB flash drive. Okay, USB stick, pen drive, whatever you want to call it. Do note something here, okay? So there were, there were a couple of questions. There were one, how do I update my, my BIOS? to the latest one, that, that was one. And two, is my CPU RAM compatible? The RAM that I'm using right now, uh, let me put memory here. I, I clicked on CPU memory support. I clicked on memory. I'm using a G skill, okay? And right now I have four of 32 gigabytes. I don't have two, I have four. Do know that Asus keeps updating this list. Before there were no four of something, okay. There was only two. Um, so that this is new, and in inside of this type of sizes, there's a bunch of new RAM. So before, when last I checked, for G scale of 32 gigabytes each um, RAM at six six thousand, which is what I have, there were only four at that moment. Now there's six, so there's two new ones here. Okay, for now, the one that I'm using is still not here. But as you can see, I'm using my computer, I'm recording this video, I can basically do anything. This is to give you an idea or what ASUS is trying to do here. It's not just memory that they've uh, double checked and it's super compatible and all that, but it's also in regards to the XMP. So if you saw my previous videos, I was able to get my RAM from uh, 4,800 to actually 5,000, I think it was 200 or 400 or 600, something like that. Uh, it's one of my previous videos about using XMP and getting it to a place where, yeah, it, it, it boosts the performance a little bit. And I do end up using XMP, but I do not get it to 6,000, at least not yet. So with the coming firmwares that I was uh, mentioning in the previous videos, you can see that little by little, Asus is getting to that point. Okay, so um, I'll be um, hoping that my RAM will go here eventually, but in the four times 32 area, which is the, the one that I'm using. I'm, I'm really happy that they, they're actually showing this. Okay, let me remove this here because it means that there's some RAM, which one, that you can actually, okay, so it's Corsair, that you can actually use four of them um, and they will run just fine at the same time. Maybe, probably with the XMP factor there. So anyway, this is something for you to take into consideration. If the, your RAM is not here, specific one, don't worry about it in the future. Most likely, uh, Asus will do an update, a firmware update that will support XMP on your, or or a higher XMP on your RAM. Okay, I get, I'm guessing you can email them or something. For the CPU, it's basically uh, this is just you know everything. Uh, it does say this, so you gotta take that into consideration. Uh, you do need to update to a specific firmware for everything about that CPU to actually work properly. Um, the one that I have is this baby. Um, yeah, that's it. And okay, so let's continue. I downloaded the 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 
file here. This was made for Windows. You can see an actual oh, .x there. So let's put it here. Okay. There you go. And if you saw when I was actually downloading this, it says something. In, for the ones that you already know, this is like super stupid. Before running the USB BIOS flashback tool, please rename the file to this. Let's copy that, okay? That literally means I don't know why they couldn't do it themselves. It's just renaming this to this. That's all. That's all. This thing, what it does is that's all that it does. So I, I don't know why they can't do it themselves, okay? After this, you just copy this file and you put it on a USB stick. Make sure the USB uh, flash drive is uh, FAT32. So it's formatted as FAT32. We're going to do it right now. Let me just insert one here. Uh, boom. And let's, uh, I'm going to open disk. And here's the, the one that I'm using. Partition for, you know, it was for installing um, um, uh, Ubuntu. Stop it. Stop it there. Let's delete everything here. Where the hell is this? Okay. Longest presentation about deleting something. Okay. Let's format this thing and we're going to format it in this one. Okay, this is part 32. Yeah, yeah, sure. What the hell? Boom, there we go. Okay, so we now open that baby here. Here it is. Okay, and we just copy this. And now with a little bit of slideshow, I'm gonna be showing you what you're supposed to be doing on on the BIOS. Basically you reboot and we're gonna be using this on the BIOS. Uh, just in case, let us let me show you what I have right now. I think this baseboard here, oops, right. So we are using, I think it was baseboard. No, nope. baseboard. Okay, so here it is, BIOS. Right now, I got a 0703. Okay, uh, you can you can see it. Well, okay. Let me show. Okay, there we go. This is the last one that I have there. If you go to DMID code, you know, type BIOS, you can see it here. Okay. So continue with the second part. Okay, now we're in the BIOS. Here's the 0703 version. Okay, let's go to Tools. And then we're going to go to Asus EC Flash 3 Utility. You're going to see multiple storage devices, but you're going to pick the flash drive, the pen drive that you that you actually put the file in. So for me, it's this one. Here's the file. Make sure that you pick the proper one, okay, just in case. Okay, so here's the file that we just created. There you go. Okay, let me click on it. Uh, it's going to say the bit locker recovery, as always. Uh, that's more for Windows than for us Linux users. Click yes. It's going to tell us if you want to read the only change log or just the. There's nothing there, it's just the version. So if you click, you see this. It's, that, that, that's all. What a waste. Anyway. Let's start. Okay, so let me explain. The whole process takes between 12 and 14 minutes. So I actually compress the whole thing here to around um, five minutes, five minutes and a half, just to explain um, the amount of rebooting, turning off and on. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to do anything, okay? except for the messages that pop up that say click here or press OK or something. Everything else is done by the, by the, the whole motherboard, the BIOS uh, process for the, for the update, okay? But you do need to know 
that takes this takes between 12 and 14 minutes so 12 15 minutes put it like that it's going to turn off the computer more than five times the first four i think it was four uh it was um during like detecting or configuring the the ram you're gonna see that once i log into the bios again it's gonna have the wrong memory speed but after i reboot like i save it again it's gonna have the proper one okay it's gonna have a new bios version but it's gonna have the wrong memory speed and once it actually runs the diagnostic for the for the memory like a, to optimize and all that to, to actually know which is the more optimal one um then it's gonna uh, have the 4800 uh here you can see that it says fd because i'm doing the firmware uh, update there so you just need to wait you just need to wait don't be scared okay there's it's not freezing it's it's not anything there's five um parts or blocks here on the bios and and you saw that it was actually updating number five because in case something bad happens it can it has a way of going back um to, to like a fail safe let's put it like that so here is updating one you're gonna see two three four and five um let me see what else do you need to know oh the turning off part so it's gonna turn off the computer several times don't turn it on don't do anything absolutely anything uh, to it unless it's been more than 15 minutes in one of those stages okay sure maybe it's your um power supply that that what it didn't support the turning off on but i don't know something there but uh right now for me i was able to to which would be rare by the way for the power supply thing like if you bought a good one great for you um anything over 800 750 something like that uh gold standard or or more um but if it turns off don't just leave it it'll turn itself on uh, there, there were two cases where it actually turned off and it was like that for like 20 seconds and we're like okay and then it, it actually started back on um once the whole process here finishes and we go actually go to the bios you're gonna see that wrong it has the wrong memory speed again and it, it needs to like remember everything that you set up before it will have it set up there so that's why i'll just open it i'll save it again it will go through the whole process of uh, the optimal speed for the ram the optimal uh, uh, configuration for everything else that it had there before and it will arrive at the same um let's put it like this the, the same stability that i had before do note that on this video i did not disable mc i did not disable the asus uh, multi-core enhancement if you want stability disable that thing for god's sake uh, it 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 actually causes depending on what app you're running it crashes the app okay uh, just for you to know it could be a game or it could be me transcoding or creating a video uh so just disable the thing i actually put it in force all limits okay okay so here we have update successfully system will reset so i reset like it here you can see they turn it itself off okay it's going to do this again these are the four times that it's going to do it you're not going to see all four you're only going to see two because i made the video shorter i mean why the hell would you want to see a computer turn itself off four times actually four times right now there's going to be two more later after i i re, um save the the bios okay here you saw the the other turn off and to do this two more times but i made the video shorter so just let's skip that part so it's going to come to a play to a point where it's going to show uh, a message for you to not turn the computer off obviously so you don't get scared about oh my god it's turning itself on and off 
So it, it shows you this. Okay, BIOS is updating, then shut down, reset the system to prevent system boot up failures. Obviously. Okay, here's the thing turning itself on and off. It's like the IT crowd. Have you turned the, the computer on and off again? Um, so here, here we're back. Here's the RAM, CPU speed, all that. But look at the DDR5. It's 3,600. It actually detected everything that I've connected to the computer. Okay, the SATA drives, the NVMe. Um, here's just the, the typical warnings that it gives you. If you wish to follow the Intel guidelines, I do wish to follow them, Asus. So here, actually, when I did that, I actually turned itself off and on, and I was able to get the BIOS again here. Uh, here you're seeing all the settings, everything. Like I went through everything, everything had the value that it's supposed to have. I didn't have to reconfigure everything. You do see the, the, the BIOS, the new one, 0813. Uh, but let me show you the RAM. Look at the RAM, the speed, 3,600. So let me save this. I'm only saving it. And once we come back, which by the way, it took like a minute or two to come back because it was doing all the memory thingy that I was mentioning. It actually got to 4,800, which, which is my default for this type of RAM. I have a 6,000 um, speed RAM, but the default for it, or the fallback for it, it's 4,800. So let's save this, and you can see that now I'm rebooting Ubuntu, and I'll see you soon. Okay, now we're back on on the um, Ubuntu, Ubuntu desktop. Let's do a check again here. And there you go. There you go. So I'll be checking stability for the coming days, uh, performance too, and reporting to everybody how it goes, okay, with this type of hardware. Uh, thank you for watching. And again, don't be afraid. That's why I was doing the, the whole video so you can actually know step by step what was actually happening. So you feel more relaxed when you're doing this because I know it's very sensitive updating uh, the, the, the firmware there, but don't worry. Things have changed over the past 15 years, more or less. Before, if you made an error, that was almost permanent. Now, rarely do you have a case where if you make a boo-boo, things go sideways. So don't worry. Think positive, big hugs, and let me know in the comments how it went for you.